Welcome back to my channel for another short Hasselblad X2D tutorial. And this time it's about time lapses. I want to quickly show the workflow, how to do a time lapse with that camera and also quickly go through the settings in the menu. Let's kick off the video. The first thing you have to figure out when you want to do a time lapse is getting the exposure right of the particular scene you're shooting. And that of course depends on the lighting conditions and the environment. And it concerns your aperture setting, your shutter speed, and of course your ISO setting. And that's the same as if you would go for a single frame. So I don't cover that here. Otherwise we would go into the basics of photography. If we are in the normal shooting mode here, we can swipe down and swiping down reveals all these icons we can touch. And there's the drive mode here. And in the drive mode, we have single, we have continuous shooting, we have self timer, we have exposure bracketing, which you can use for HDR image composition, and we have interval. And on interval, we have all in five settings we can tweak. And that's what I wanna quickly cover. Then I wanna show the workflow, how to process these frames. And then I also wanna show a tiny little time lapse, which I did at a rooftop in Zurich. So you see how this looks at the end. What you see here on the display is just an overview screen. It gives you in one rectangle the parameter settings you have chosen. So whenever you switch from a different drive mode into interval, it gives you that over screen. And if you tap into that rectangle, it enlarges and now you can tweak your parameters. And the first parameter to choose is the time interval between consecutive frames. And I can touch here on the two seconds. And then we can here basically choose from two seconds up to, let's see what we can do here. Well, you can go into the minutes here if you wanna go over a very long time interval and collect every, let's say five minutes an image. But the shortest you can have is two seconds. And I wish this would go down to one second because in some situations that can make a difference, but two seconds is the shortest interval you have. And that's very likely due to the large image size you have in terms of file size here, which needs some time to get processed and stored on the internal SSD or the compact flash express card so that you later have the frames stored. So in my case, I was going for a time-lapse of the clouds and I decided actually for the shortest interval in between the frames I could choose, namely two seconds here. If you wanna shoot a cloud time-lapse, the longer you go here in the interval between consecutive frames, the faster your clouds will move. But you also need to be careful that there are now erratic jumps in it. So I decided for two seconds, which will give me a very smooth movement of the clouds. And uh, since the sky in that shooting location on that particular day and time was quite dramatic, I hoped actually that this gives a very nice time lapse, of course. The next parameter to set is the number of frames you're shooting. And I have set this to 600 because I will process the video with 30 frames per second. And that means I get about 20 seconds out of that little clip if I compile it later with Lightroom and Premiere Pro. So 600 frames here was my choice. I typically go for an initial delay. That is a self timer and you can choose here between two seconds, 10 seconds or longer. And uh, I decide here for two seconds because I had the camera on a tripod and there was no shaky ground or environment. So two seconds is just fine here. The next parameter is metering and that's a very important parameter here. And you have two choices here. You have each frame or first frame. I went for each frame here because I had a permanent change in weather conditions between sunny and cloudy throughout these 600 frames. And I wanted to get my exposure to be constant over that time period when I took the 600 frames. But if for instance, you plan to shoot a time lapse of the sunset and you want to see later that it gets darker and darker, then you should go for metering at first frame only. And then the metered parameters will be set as constant throughout all 600 frames, which I set up here for that intervalometer shooting. If you wanted to shoot that sunset time lapse and you would go for each frame, then the camera would compensate. For instance, we are pushing up the ISO value for a scene that gets darker over the shooting of these 600 frames. And you would never see in the time lapse that it gets darker because the camera is permanently compensating to keep the level of light and exposure constant. And that's not what you wanna have if you shoot a sunrise or a sunset because you wanna see in the time lapse that it gets brighter or that it gets darker depending what time of the day you're shooting. The last parameter we can set here in that menu is when finished. And we have two choices here. We have exit and we have stay. 
and exit means when the time lapse is done, in my case all the 600 frames are taken and stored, then the drive mode returns to normal drive mode. And if you go on stay, then actually the drive mode continues to be the intervalometer setting. And that is also something to bear in mind. I typically have this on exit because if, you know, I forget something, I don't wanna, when I wanna take next time a single shot, all of a sudden see a time lapse or intervalometer shooting kicking in. And that's basically all you need to know to shoot time lapses with the X2D. And remember, you have always this overview screen. So if you come from a different drive mode into intervalometer, you see immediately your parameters. And if you don't want to do a time lapse, don't forget to switch it back to single drive mode so that next time when you press the shutter button, not an intervalometer sequence is kicking in when you just wanted to take a single frame. What I want to do now is I want to quickly show these 600 frames I took on this particular morning on a rooftop in Zurich and uh, also show quickly the workflow. Then we look into the clip, how it looks like and what you can do with it and then I conclude the video. These are the frames and here's one example of them. It was an early morning hour and the sun was coming partially through the clouds. So I had, if you look at the left hand side, the before image, quite some shadows in the lower half of the image and quite some bright backlight in the upper half of the image. So I corrected for this in post processing and let's crop in a little bit to see what level of detail I captured here in this frame. And uh, you see nothing less we expected from the new Hasselblad X2D looks really good. And in general the morning hour at a day like this in early fall is just a beautiful time for a time lapse and I hope that when I later compile these images in Premiere Pro into a time lapse sequence that we see these bright clouds moving smoothly and creating a nice flow. Since these Hasselblad X2D images have 100 megapixel resolution and a file size larger than 200 megabyte, it takes a long time if I copy pasted the settings from one frame and then paste it over to the other 599 frames. When Lightroom completed the job, I exported the 600 JPEG files into a dedicated folder and made sure I named the frames in a way that it is suitable for sequence processing in Premiere Pro. Creating a time-lapse video in Premiere Pro out of a number of frames is straightforward. So I just click here on import and then I end already up in the dedicated folder here. So I click the first frame, but only the first frame Go into options and make sure that image sequence here is checkboxed. Then I push import and then the job is already done. Let's pull this up to the timeline. And uh, you know, we have here 100 megapixel frames. So if I don't render it, it will not play nicely, but we can nevertheless give it a try and push the play button here and see if we already see some movement here. And yes, a little bit moving. I think I should render this now. I'll scale it down to 4K and then let's move on to dynamic time lapses, which is the huge potential you get with 100 megapixel images from the Hasselblad X2D. Now, what do I mean by dynamic time lapses? And time lapses become more interesting if you have the camera mounted on a hardware slider and then get some movement in the time lapse. And that is something which is additional hardware you have to carry around. But if your frames have 100 megapixel resolution, you are beyond 12K video resolution. And natively we have here a resolution of 11,501 times 8,626 pixels. And since I'm going to render the clip down to 4K, we have huge reserves here to crop into the frames and create a panning and moving effect just by software in post-processing instead of having to carry around a slider for time lapses. So I'm going to show the same 20 second clip again, but this time I have cropped into the frames and created this panning and moving effect. And you will see that this provides a completely different and much nicer dynamic of the final time lapse clip. So let's have a look. Totally different clip, right? And here we have them side by side, static versus dynamic. And dynamic is only possible because we have this huge resolution in each single frame. And then in Premiere Pro, if we later wanna have the final video in 4K, 
we can just crop in whatever the heck we want and make this a very dynamic time lapse as if we had mounted the camera on a slider. If you liked that short tutorial on time lapse photography with the new Hasselblad X2D, don't forget to drop me your thumbs up, stay tuned on my channel, there is always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.